with the selfish gene in what year? 70 76. Has anything in the intervening 24 years caused you to question the thesis? Or in fact, said in a different way, has all that has transcended since then simply reinforced and made more resolute your power and respect, your respect for the power of the gene? Yeah, no, nothing has changed in that. In that. I, I still stand by it. I wouldn't write it quite the, today the way I wrote it then, but the, How would you the, write the fundamental it? thesis. Well, I think my, my style would be a little bit, I'd be a little bit more cautious about certain little ways of saying things. Well, like what? Give me. In, in um, other words, but you, but just simply because the way you said it and the language you used precipitated a reaction that did not necessarily respect the point you wanted to make? Yes, that's right. It was a, a misunderstood book quite largely by people who didn't actually read it, <laughs> read it by title only. I mean, it's, a, it's got a t title which kind of provokes people because people think it means that we are selfish or that individual organisms are selfish. And it doesn't mean that. It means genes are selfish. And as a consequence of genes being selfish, individuals like us may be very altruistic. So a great deal of the book is explaining why individuals are altruistic because genes are selfish. Genes, of course, aren't selfish in the sense that they have thoughts. They're just DNA. I mean, they can't be selfish in that sense. But they look after their own self-interest. The fundamental Darwinian law is that uh, DNA codes work through individuals to preserve themselves. And one of the ways they work is to make individuals altruistic, nice, cooperative. It's not the only way, but...